And hello YouTube, this is Thomas Judge, back once again with another episode of Valiant to the Last. And in today's episode, we're going to be looking at this deluxe hardcover, which is Harbinger Wars. So as a quick recap of what I'm doing, is I'm rereading, well, I'm reading for the first time, all of my Valiant deluxe hardcovers. Um, I know very little about the Valiant universe, but like many people, I just collected and bought all of them. So I've got about 40 of these deluxe hardcovers, and I decided to actually start going through them. I'm reading around about one a week. Um, so recently I've read Harbinger Volume 1, then Bloodshot Volume 1, and if you watch those last two videos, you'll know that for each of those deluxe editions, I left a little bit at the end because those issues were collected here. And this is the Harbinger Wars Deluxe Edition, which brings together Bloodshot and Harbinger. So, this is the cover, love this artwork, this is by Clayton Crane, um, who I remember seeing in... Um, what did he do? He did the Toxin miniseries, he's done some Carnage miniseries, um, he's done some work with McFarlane, I think he did Saviour. Great artist, love his stuff, digital art, digital painting. Oh, he also did some of the um, X-Force run with Kyle and Yost back in the day as well. Great artist, love the cover. Really well composed, like that logo. Standard Valiant Spine. And Standard Valiant Back. Um, no winners, just survivors. That's a, a version of that quote of there are no winners in war, only survivors, uh, which actually mentioned in the comic as well. Let's pop this open. We've got the inside blurb there. We've got the back there with the creator's names and details. And if we pop off the cover, we'll see here, much like the one we saw last week and the week before, um, what we have is a nice embossed cover here. It says Harbinger Wars, but if we look closely, we will see it actually has the Harbinger... Um, like that bird logo that they have um, for the harbingers there, right in the middle, which is kind of cool. Uh, the back is plain, and then this has a nice smooth spine. Cool. Looking at the end pages, we've got just blue papers, so that's matching, that's standard. And then let's just go into it. Uh, much like my harbinger hardcover, this one was really tight and needed the spine to be stretched, but um, it's now looking good and feeling good and it's not creaking or cracking at all. So what we have here is Harbinger Wars, as you can see, page one. Let's get into it. So, just to clarify, this is split into four separate arcs. And I think it's interesting to see how this is composed. I'll talk more about the structure of the narrative um, later on in the video. But what we have is Generation Zero, Harada Protocols, Hardcore, that's H.A.R.D. So those are, that's an acronym for Harbinger, something response division, something core. And then we have Conclusion. Now, if we look at this, what we'll see is that we start off, say the first one is Harbinger Wars issue 1, then Harbinger issue 11, Bloodshot issue 10. The next one is Harbinger Wars issue 2, then an issue of Harbinger, issue of Bloodshot. And similarly here, Harbinger Wars 3, Bloodshot and then Harbinger, so changing that order around slightly. And then we have Harbinger Wars 4, Bloodshot and Harbinger again. Just zooming it in there. Now... That's the reason why when I was reading the Bloodshot and Harbinger hardcovers, I basically stopped. I stopped the Bloodshot one after issue 9 and the Harbinger one after issue 10, because I thought, hey, they're all collected in this. And what that led me to worry about um, was whether or not those other hardcovers would really require those issues in them, or whether or not they'd be unreadable out of context of this story. So let's start flicking through it. Standard Valiant um, format, it shows the images of the covers here with the title of this particular story arc, and then it gets straight into it. Usual Jonathan Hickman style info dump there, which is very cool. Um, so I guess, yeah, the first thing to talk about is the actual construction of the narrative. And what I'm going to point out is that this is incredibly cleverly put together. This is how event books should be. And the reason I say that is that if you just read the bloodshot issues, it would make sense. So having those collected as their own separate arc totally makes sense. If you read the Harbinger issues, those would make sense. And having those collected and having those available in the hardcover, again, absolutely fine. And then reading the self-titled eponymous Harbinger Wars miniseries, the four issues, that also makes sense. Now, the genius behind the way this is structured is that not only do they all make sense, all three of those four issue blocks, so Harbinger on one side, then Bloodshot, and then Harbinger Wars of the miniseries, they all cover basically the same events. But they all cover them as paraquals. Um, so a paraqual isn't like a sequel or a prequel. A paraqual is something that happens... Here we are. 
quite liking the way they've slightly changed the style of Peter Stanchek at this point. Um, so what I was saying is a paracol is, um, unlike a prequel or a sequel, a paracol is something that happens at the exact same time as the main story. Um, so I'm trying to think of an example of it. So for example, um, the video game Darksiders. Darksiders 2 is apparently set at the same time as Darksiders 1. Um, there's also like other TV shows like Lost have lots of episodes that are paracols to other episodes because they happen at the same time and then only at the end you realise it all kind of comes together. Um, so anyway, the stories here, the Bloodshot arc and the Harbinger arc and the Harbinger Wars arc, all three of those four issue blocks are all um, basically the same events but from different perspectives and viewpoints. And so as a result, they all work as a standalone. Having said that, collecting them in the correct order, which is shown here, which I showed you at the start, works brilliantly. Because it keeps on showing you and revisiting the perspectives that you thought you knew from one side, and then it revisits from another side, and you're like, holy shit, I didn't realise that was the case. I didn't realise X, Y, and Z was going on. So it's really, really well put together. This is exactly how an event book should be done. Um, this is exactly how an event book should be structured. And... What it does, it it makes it really accessible for fans who just like Bloodshot. You can just follow the Bloodshot thread, maybe pick up the Harbinger Wars miniseries and ignore Harbinger. Um, or vice versa, if you like Harbinger, you can ignore Bloodshot. Or you can read them all, you can read them all in three separate sections, or you can read them all in this wonderfully well-structured narrative that they have here. So, um, yeah, I'm a real, real big fan of how this was structured. And it's one of those things which, I guess, brings me to the second point I want to make about Harbinger Wars. Um, which is whether the storyline was satisfying or not. I'm conscious that some people have mentioned in my comments that whilst I'm reviewing these, I'm not really talking much about the storylines and what happens and what characters are which and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm not going to do that because I'm not comics explained. I'm not the comic historian. I'm not the guy who's going to give you a Wikipedia synopsis of a comic because either you want to read it or you don't. If you don't want to read it, there are loads of great resources that will talk you through step by step what, what's happening and all the spoilers and all the bits and pieces. What I will talk about is whether or not this is um, fulfilling in terms of the narrative cadence. And what I will say is this story is great. It's a really good event. And it's really interesting in scale. Um, oh, that's the yeah, that's the final page. And now we're getting into um, the gallery and the extras. Again, that awesome cover artwork. Um, the first thing to say about this event is that whilst it's called Harbinger Wars and it was the first big event Valiant did a year after they relaunched in 2012, it's really small in scale. Um, I kept on getting reminded throughout whilst I was whilst I was reading it of Captain America: Civil War in the MCU movies, where basically it was like 10 superpowered people fighting in an empty airfield. Um, it wasn't epic, it wasn't huge and grand in scope, but it worked, and it worked really, really well. Um, and obviously it teed up for much later, much more grand kind of battles. Similarly here, this Harbinger Wars, all of it basically happens in a hotel in Vegas, and it's just a bunch of people fighting. It's all kind of just disorganised. But it works really well as that small, more intimate, I guess more realistic scale. Um, and I really, really enjoyed that. Um, obviously, I, I assume there's going to be much, much bigger battles later on. Um, I love this 16-bit version of the covers that they've got here. Um, it works really well. And yeah, like I said, I just really enjoyed the kind of the restraint that Valiant showed in doing quite a subtle, subdued storyline um for this one so that's the first thing that i'll point out about it the second thing that i'll point out about it is that this was the first hardcover that i read of the ones that i've read so far where i was like god damn this is really good like bloodshot the one that i read last week that was good but this was just this is like 10 out of 10 and not only that the way this works so i'm just going back to the beginning just while i carry on flicking through it um this um not only is it a great story, but also it is a great resolution for the stories you've read so far. So, for example, this is a great way to continue and resolve the Bloodshot storyline arcs that we've seen. And Bloodshot, as you as you would have gathered from my previous video, I enjoy quite a bit. But this is also quite redemptive for Harbinger as an arc. Now, I didn't really enjoy the Harbinger Deluxe Edition. And given that was one of the first ones that I read, that's quite a disappointing thing to be like, Oh, man, I bought loads of these and maybe I don't actually like them. Um, but the characterization of the character's... In Harbinger, so that's um, Talk, the big dude whose name I forgot originally, um, Charlene, uh, Faith, Chris, and Peter. 
right? The characterization of them is much better in this. I mean, even this scene, for example, is just really interesting when you consider, like, Talk's character, how he interacts with Charlene, how he interacts with other people. Um, the artwork and the way that they depict it is better. Peter is a much more amiable and appealing protagonist at this stage. So all of a sudden, like, the characterization of the Harbinger characters at this point suddenly clicks. And it also clicks and locks in with the bloodshot, the events of what's been going on with bloodshot and so on. Basically, this Harbinger War story kind of pulls together the bloodshot and Harbinger narratives into something which is consolidated and really enjoyable. It does make me think that had I been picking this up as singles, and I basically never read singles, I always wait for collections, had I been reading Harbinger as singles, I would have dropped off. Possibly even at the first issue. Literally a couple of issues in, I would have dropped off. Um, but what Valiant did here is that they kind of played the long game. Whether they're deliberately or not, whether or not they realised that there were some characterization missteps in the first collection that they wanted to rectify, I don't know. But what I will say is that they did definitely capitalise on that slow burn, on that slow and steady approach um, to have a really good denouement in Harbinger Wars. So yeah, um, that's, that's just all I can say about this. Um, like I said, I don't want to go too long on these videos. Hope that um, flick through was um, encouraging and helpful. I guess that leaves me with a question of what am I going to read next? Now, there's a lot of different ways I could go about this. I could continue the Bloodshot thread. I could continue the, har continue the Harbinger thread. Um, or I could um, go down a different thread, like Exo Manor War or something like that. I'm also quite curious because we've now been introduced to this idea of Generation Zero, which I know has its own series, which isn't um, collected in deluxe format. And we've also um, got Harbinger Renegades, which is its own kind of mini-series, or I think it's like a six-issue, eight-issue series somewhere, again, not connected in deluxe. So I'm trying to work out when I should read those. Do I read those now? Do I read those later? So I'm having a bit of a ponder. I'm not sure what the next deluxe edition I'm going to read is. I might do something completely random, like read Shadow Man or something, but um, I will catch you on next week's video. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. As always, please follow me on Twitter at I am Thomas Judge, where I will post uh, a daily review of whatever comics I've been reading. You can get an idea of what I'm up to on the channel. Um, and as always, please support the channel by heading over to Amazon.com and checking out my prose novel about superheroes. It's a completely original piece of work. The first episode in it is called Arrivals, and the series as a whole is called No Gods or Kings. You can find an excerpt of that on my website, nogodsorkings.com. Until next time, everybody, stay classy.